Hello everyone, and welcome to this Diablo 3 video for leveling an alternate character, Solo. There's no doubt that the easiest and quickest way overall to level an alt is to get power level by someone else. But if you're interested in leveling solo, for the fun, for the experience, or if no one else is available to help you out and you just want to get it done, then this guide is for you. Before you jump on your alt character, you'll need to do some things with your main character up front. First, level the following three legendary gems to at least level 25 to unlock their full benefits. Gem of Ease, Legacy of Dreams, and Molten Will to be Skizzard. You'll be able to leverage all three of these the entire time you're leveling. Level the gems as high as you reasonably can. Next, make sure you have all of the blacksmithing recipes. The blacksmith can craft several items for each slot of gear. Several recipes are automatically learned, but you'll need to obtain the remaining ones. The best way to get them is from the reward caches you receive for completing bounties, so complete bounties until you receive them all. Next, head to the hidden camp waypoint in Act 2 and speak with Squirt the Peddler. Purchase the recipes for the Hellfire Amulet and the Hellfire Ring and learn them at the Jeweler. These two gear pieces are equipable at level 1 and will provide significant benefits to your alt character while leveling. Note that there are two Hellfire Ring recipes. One is sold for 2 million gold and the other for 5 million. The recipe you need is the one that costs 5 million gold and you'll need to purchase this on a level 70 character. Next, you'll need to gather the materials needed to craft the Hellfire Amulet and Ring. These materials drop from special bosses and to summon them you'll need to first gather four different infernal machines from the four key wardens. There is one key warden in each of the first four acts and their location is designated on the map with a key symbol next to the waypoint. Once you have the infernal machines, head to New Tristram in Act 1 and enter the house next to the healer NPC. Use each infernal machine to summon a portal to the respective boss area and complete the fight to get your materials. You'll need one of each of the four crafting materials per craft attempt of the Hellfire Amulet and Ring. Next, you'll want to farm some blood shards. Whatever your maximum cap of blood shards is, fill it all the way up just before jumping on your alt character. By doing this, your alt will have some blood shards to spend right away to obtain some beneficial items. After you've done your prep work, create your new character and log them in. Make sure to set the game to adventure mode at the maximum difficulty, Torment 6. After logging in, assign your paragon points, equip a pet to benefit from its gold pickup capability, and then hire a follower. The Templar is always a solid choice no matter what class you're playing. Next, go to the jeweler and craft a Hellfire Amulet and a Hellfire Ring. These items are equipable at level 1, and while you'll get the benefit of an extra passive skill and a massive increase to experience gained, the key benefit of both of them is actually the socket property. This will allow you to wear two legendary gems. If needed, re-roll a property on the jewelry pieces to obtain a socket. If you have enough crafting materials, you can keep crafting these until you get ones with better properties, but don't worry about optimizing them too much. Next, equip the Legacy of Dreams gem and one of the jewelry pieces. This gem will provide you extra damage and toughness based on the number of legendary items you have equipped. We'll be crafting legendary items to wear to maximize the benefit from this gem. And the other jewelry piece, equip the Molten Wildebeest Gizzard gem. This gem will provide an enormous absorb shield and insane health regeneration to keep your health topped off. Now, remember that red beam of light reaching down from the sky at the end of your greater rift that turned out to be that bad, nay horrible, primal ancient, two-handed, no legendary power having weapon that didn't even have your class's main stat on it and has no use in any build whatsoever, but you saved it anyway to take up precious space in your stash, even though you'll eventually break it down into forgotten souls when it's mailed to your non-seasonal in-game mail. Yeah, it finally has a purpose. This is exactly the moment an item like this has been waiting for. Go to your stash and find a level 70 two-handed weapon. You want to use a two-handed weapon because this will give you higher damage and stats. You'll need a socket on the weapon, so either use a Ramaladni's Gift to add one to it, or re-roll one of the properties at the Mystic. If you don't have a two-handed weapon equipable by your new character, then craft a level 70 rare at the Blacksmith and upgrade it to a legendary item in Kanai's Cube with the Hope of Cain recipe. Next, equip the weapon with the Gem of Ease. This will allow your level 1 character to wield a level 70 weapon and will absolutely let you dominate. The Gem of Ease is unique equipped, meaning you can only equip one of them at a time, so again, it's best to use a two-handed weapon to get the most weapon damage. Next, go to Kanai's Cube and assign legendary powers to the three slots. There's nothing critical about what powers you take. Assign anything that will be useful, either extra damage or toughness. Some good generic weapon powers include Echoing Fury, The Furnace, or Thunder Fury. For armor, you can take Cinder Coat, Frostburn, Gold Wrap, Laoric's Crown, Mage Fist, Nemesis Bracers, or Pox Faults. And for the jewelry slot, you can take Convention of Elements or Squirt's Necklace. You can put more effort into this during the preparation stage using your main character by finding some of these items and making sure they're already extracted into Kanai's cube, but it's generally not worth the time. If you have any class specific damage multiplier legendary powers, then definitely try to use those. We'll discuss this a little more in depth later on in the guide. Next, it's time to spend some blood shards. 
Go to Kadala and purchase helms until you get Leoric's crown, then purchase pants until you get Poxfolds, and then purchase rings until you get Leoric's signet. If you still have blood shards remaining, roll for other gear pieces and try to get as many legendary items as you can. If the items aren't yet equipable, just hang on to them in your inventory for now. If you weren't lucky enough to obtain Leoric's crown, then you probably want to assign this legendary power in the armor slot of Kanai's cube. You'll eventually be able to equip a ruby in your helm, which will provide bonus experience, and the Leoric's crown legendary power can double it. You can also put more effort into this during the preparation stage using your main character, by continuing to farm blood shards and spending them on your level 1 character until you have something for every slot. But again, this is generally not worth the time. Next, head to the blacksmith to craft some items. For any gear slots that you do not already have low level legendary items to equip, craft them here. You're looking for items that can be equipped as early as possible. If there are no low level legendary item recipes, then craft a low level green set item. Just don't make multiple items that are from the same set. Set items count as legendary items for the bonuses from the Legacy of Dreams gem. But if you have any set bonuses active, even if it's just a two piece bonus, then it will completely negate the effect of the gem. Assuming you received Leoric's crown and Poxfall's pants from Kadala, Here's a combination of lower level items that you can craft without activating any set bonuses. While crafting items, you might notice two sets that offer bonus experience in the Born set and the Kane set, but these experience bonuses will pale in comparison to the Legacy of Dreams gem benefits. Make sure you have a legendary item for each gear slot. You can use these low level legendary items the entire time you level, all the way to level 70. As long as they're legendary items, the benefits from the Legacy of Dreams gem will outweigh the gear stats. But of course, you can upgrade to new legendaries you find along the way. Once you have all of your items crafted, just keep them in your inventory for now. Next, look at the sockets you have on any of your armor pieces, excluding the jewelry, and equip the highest level gems you can. Make sure to put a ruby in your helm, and use your class's main stat gem in the chest or pants. Now you're ready to go. The most straightforward way to level is to just run regular Nephilim rifts until you're level 70. As you're leveling, which you should do insanely quickly in the beginning, equip your legendary items as soon as you can. When you can no longer kill enemies in one hit, pause and assign some skills. If at some point you notice you're starting to take too much damage or the monsters are taking too long to kill, then drop the difficulty down in-game until it's comfortable again. If you run into toughness issues, then consider moving some Paragon points from your main stat into Vitality to increase your survivability. You want to be able to survive hits and allow the Molten Wildebeest Gizzard Legendary Gem to keep you healed. If you complete the steps already mentioned, then you will level extremely quickly for relatively low effort. But if you're interested in taking solo power leveling even further, then you can perform the following steps. As mentioned previously, you can farm blood shards on your main character and spend them on your alt. You can actually purchase a legendary item for many of your gear slots, so you won't have to craft too many. And you can also use your main character to collect items for Kanai's cube before playing with your alt. You can try to equip a second ring with a socket on it so you can benefit from a fourth legendary gem, but the extra benefit isn't really worth the effort. If you do find an extra ring with a socket, equip either Bane of the Powerful or Bane of the Trapped. As mentioned previously, using a generic high damage level 70 two-handed weapon is a fine choice for leveling and will definitely get the job done. But if you're really looking to level even faster, then you'll want to focus on using damage multipliers for certain skills to increase your damage output. To get class specific legendary powers, craft level 70 rares at the blacksmith with your alt and then upgrade them to legendary items in Kanai's cube with the hope of cane recipe. You'll ideally want to get a two-handed weapon with a damage multiplier to a certain skill that you can equip on your character, and then get a damage multiplier to that same skill on a second weapon and an armor piece that you can then extract into Kanai's cube with the Archive of Talrasha recipe. Upgrading rares like this will not only benefit your new character while leveling, but it can also benefit them at level 70 to help them get off to a better start. Just hang on to any items you obtain while crafting because you might need them later on anyway, depending on what build you plan to play. When it comes to skill damage multipliers, there are several potential routes you can go with each of the classes. Here's some suggestions on what you could keep an eye out for, but this is not the only option for each class. A good approach is to peruse the Kanai's Cube legendary powers and look for combinations of items that might work well together. Look for items that have synergies or that buff the same skill. I won't go through all the options here, but if you're interested in seeing what other options are available, then let me know in the comments and we might do a separate video with a more in-depth look at this. And then, if you are really interested in leveling as fast as possible, then you could use the work of Kathan recipe in Kanai's Cube to remove the level requirements for a full set of gear from an in-game build. However, each item would require a rank 25 gem of ease, and the time investment required for getting this many level 25 gems is way higher than the time it would take you to level a character otherwise. Only leverage this recipe if you are really interested in doing it or plan to level a tremendous amount of characters for some reason, and even then you would probably only want to do this for your non-seasonal setup. If you were to use this recipe on any one piece of gear, then use it on a level 70 ring with a socket so you can benefit from a 4th legendary gem at level 1. 
A lot of the concepts for leveling an alt character are similar to those for leveling a new character in a fresh new season, so you might want to check out our seasonal leveling guide for extra insights. Remember that these alt leveling tips apply to both seasonal and non-seasonal play and make it a much more enjoyable and rewarding experience instead of you just standing at the entrance of a rift AFK. And there's the optimal tips for leveling an alternate character while solo. Hopefully you found something helpful that you can leverage in the future, and I look forward to seeing you at the next video. Thanks for watching.